Welcome to our latest video from Chapman Robinson and More Accountants in Oxfordshire. This video is to share with you the five most common journal entries that we're asked to support our clients with or what we see that people are using for their monthly management accounts. Now to get to journal entries you need to go to company and you can either access a journal entry through the tasks or the menu bar at the top. So if we select journal entry, you can see the first part gives you a reference, so that will be a reference that we can trace through if we needed to our, our journal entry. And I've put payrolls because that will be one of the five that I'm going to share with you and we'll come back to that in a moment. The concept of the journal entries is you have a number of debits, a number of credits and the total of both columns are equal before you then save that journal and post that journal. In terms of posting date, that could be today, it could be a previous date, or it could be a future date. But obviously you need to be aware, as per usual, of your accurate posting dates. If we look at payroll as the first of the five that I want to share with you as part of this video, let's say for example we're going to post that as the payroll date of the 24th of August. There are five areas to post in terms of nominal codes, the first one being the gross wages we may call this the payroll or we may call it payroll for the month of X for example and the gross wages is a debit for our profit and loss purposes then we have the employers national insurance 7006 we can F6 the details to copy that through and again that's a debit and those two entries give us the true cost of our payroll for our profit and loss purposes the control accounts for the opposite side for the credits are the net wages, triple two zero, the PAYE that we've deducted from our employees, and the national insurance. And the national insurance is the employer's national insurance that we've added the debit for, plus the national insurance that we've collected from our employees' deductions. Once the two columns are equal we can then save that journal. In terms of the control accounts, those control accounts are there cleared, therefore cleared down as and when we make the bank payment whether that's for a payment that's actually been made to HMRC or to the employees by cheque or online that we then post into our bank account. The second area is VAT and with the latest versions of SAGE accounts you can actually use the VAT wizard but to show you the manual entry, the nominal codes that we use are 2200 to clear down the sales tax. And again, we might say the VAT from quarter X to again show the range that uh, the VAT quarter that we're completing. And to clear the sales tax, it's a debit. And we'd place that to the control account of VAT a liability of 2202. That's therefore then a credit. Then we'd similarly do that with the purchase tax. Again, we F6 the details each time. This time to clear down the purchase tax, it's a credit. And the opposite entry going again to VAT liability, this time being a debit. So the difference between the VAT liability debit entry and credit entry is therefore then the amount that you either need to pay to HMRC or reclaim from HMRC, and therefore the bank receipt or the bank payment, depending of which type it is, therefore then clears that VAT liability control account at a later point. The third journal entry that I want to cover is depreciation. This tends to be completed perhaps at the end of each month and depreciation therefore gives us an accurate flavour for the management accounts so now profit and loss. The first entry to complete is in the assets itself, so if we look at the zeros range of the nominal codes in SAGE, and again you may set up your chart of accounts slightly differently, but in terms of looking at the default codes, we can see that we've got those for property, plants and machinery, office and equipment. Now in terms of posting the depreciation code, we'd use the areas ending with the one which then shows the depreciation separately to the original asset entry. So we might call this monthly depreciation. 
and again for this time we put the credit and then to show that in our profit and loss we're going to then place a debit against the 8000 range now in the 8000s you may just have one depreciation code for example 8000 but you can see again in this default data that there are a number of different depreciation codes that have been set up to show the depreciation in the account separately so again we can choose the relevant one F6 and this time we place a debit to show that as a uh, debit to our chart of accounts and profit and loss reports and we do that for all the assets that we want to depreciate on a regular basis again in terms of the amounts that you would need to um, add here then I suggest taking advice from your accountant so they can advise you the amounts depending on how you're going to account for the depreciation of that asset the last two areas are prepayments and accruals so if we first of all look at prepayments again norm, normally an end of month posting the default code for prepayments is 1103 details may be monthly prepayments because it's quite common to track the prepayments outside of, of SAGE the prepayment as we're creating the prepayment is a debit and then we would credit the area that we've in effect prepaid so that could be for example some insurance payment that we may have paid annually or it could be our rent payment that we've paid quarterly and again the opposite side therefore then would be a credit because we've prepaid our rent we've received the invoice and that would already have debited that nominal code so we're going to release out say for example two months of the three from the quarter payment to then release back in on a monthly basis for our accurate management accounts the important aspect is once you've taken the prepayment out then each month you are releasing back in the prepayment to give you an accurate reflection of your accounts likewise with accruals again it may be an end of month journal the default for accruals is 2109 this time we're going to be placing a credit for what we're going to be accruing for and we may accrue for things like your accountancy fees that you may not get until the end of the year or it could be something like your utilities so it could be something like your water rates for example or it could be another type of utilities such as your um, electricity or your gas and again you'll be accruing say for example on a monthly basis to give you an accurate reflection in your accounts but you may only be receiving the bill on an annual or quarterly basis and therefore once you're receiving those bills you can make an adjustment by reversing the accrual by therefore debiting accruals and then crediting the relevant area that you've been making the accrual for I hope this video has been useful to give you an overview of the five most common journal entries that we're asked to advise our clients for. If you do have any questions, then please do not hesitate to contact us here at Chabram Robinson & More.